John here. Let's talk about how to test the bank select logic here that we use to access the static RAM from the Z80. Quick recap, whenever the Z80 wants to access memory, it outputs the address of the byte it wants to read or write on a 16-bit address bus that comes from the Z80. The bits are labeled A0 through A15, which is over here, okay? The low order A0 through 14 go over here. Now, the U13 logic over here, what it does is any time A15 is a 1, these OR gates will all output a 1 over here, which means if the Z80 accesses memory in the upper half of the range that it has, right, in hex, that's 8000 through FFFF, then the address that's presented to the static RAM chip will have all these bits of 1s here. If the Z80 ever sends an address out of the address bus that has a zero in A15, then these four bits that are sent to the SRAM are dependent on the low bank bits that come out of the general purpose output port down here, which we can set to anything we want under software control. So low bank 15 through 18 mean what range of addresses, which bytes in the static RAM chip, do we want to interact with from the Z80 when the Z80 presents an address when A15 is zero? Now let's think about this for a second, make sure everybody's in sync here. Uh, from the Z80 perspective, it can only generate addresses between 0000, 000, 000 and FFFF. This is probably a little bit tiny for this screen, I'll get over it. Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do is declare that as being two banks of memory. Each of these two banks is 32K bytes in size, all right? The static RAM has a half a megabyte. Therefore, it has a total of 16 of these 32 banks, only two of which at a time can be accessed by our Z80. So U13 is used to select which one of these 16 banks from the static RAM will be available to be interacted with by the Z80 in its lower bank here. So for example, if I set the low bank latch to be a hexadecimal E, when the Z80 generates an address between zero and seven FFF, the OR gates in U13 will translate that address from the Z80 to appear in this range from the SRAM's perspective, seven zero 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 through seven seven FFF thus selecting, or we can say mapping, bank number E from the static RAM into bank number zero from the perspective of the Z80. If we set the low uh, bank address value to two for bank number two, which would be the third one in the SRAM, then when the Z80 runs, it will uh, access, again, uh, everything from the top bank in the static RAM if A15 is a one in the range of 8,000 through FFFF in hex. And if the Z80 generates addresses less than 8,000 in hex, the uh, U13 will map the uh, addresses from the Z80 down here into bank number two from the static RAM. The same thing if we set the low uh, bank address uh, latch to a one or a zero or whatever we're gonna do. Now it's interesting to observe that we could also set the low bank if we wanted to, to be F, at which point in time, both the low bank and the high bank of the Z80, if we did that, would both map to the same bank and you'd have the same bytes appearing in the low bank and the high bank when we're generating addresses from the Z80, all right? I mean, that's just an observation based on the simplicity of the way that U13 is connected up with A15 and low bank latch. So as exciting as all that is, what does it mean to our software? So here we are in the tests uh, software directory of the Z80 retro board project from GitHub. This is the bank select test application. Let's see how this thing works. It starts out almost normal. First instruction says jump to underscore start, which is right over here. And that's there to jump over a big blank area that's filled with this instruction here. This is define storage. 
This is the amount of bytes we want it to do define, and this is the value we want all those bytes to have. Now, uh, what I've done here is I've allocated what? 32K, hex 8,000 is 32K, minus dollar, which is the position of the beginning of this storage that this thing defines, right? Dollar is the current position in the assembler's perspective of where everything goes. So 8,000 minus dollar is going to be the 32K minus the three bytes that are consumed by this instruction there. It's going to set them all to FF. Now, the reason I chose FF in particular is because when you erase the flash, it will set all the bits to one in the entire uh, chip, thus making them all equal to FF. And there's this optimization that takes place in the flash programmer. If we're ever going to program an FF into the flash, it just simply skips it. And the value of that is it runs a lot faster. So if you just define storage, it would by default set them all to zero. It would take a very long time to program the flash. This thing, it skips over uh, half of the programming. <laughs> In fact, a lot more than half of the programming because I initialize it to the default value of the flash as opposed to what the assembler is going to do. And we actually don't care what the values are. So pick one that goes fast, right? So what does this thing do? Uh, this jumps up to here. And because we've padded out all the memory to 32K, this thing starts at he address hex 8000. And we do the usual thing. We're going to initialize the, the uh, bank uh, select to zero and the various pins that run the printer and stuff like that. Uh, I've changed the logic a little bit. Uh, I've commented out this line here and changed it to this here. And it'll be the same thing. At the bottom of this program here, you can see the default values down here are the same as the load instruction. The idea is I just wanted to have this all specified in one single place that was most readable. And in one of the previous examples, I didn't quite do it this way. And I thought to myself, that was not as uh, programmer friendly as I would like it to be. So I changed it around a little bit here. All right, I'm getting jiggy with it here, okay? So let's get uh, used to it. I'm going to delete that so it's not confusing. All right, so what do I do? I load the current cache value, which is initialized to the hard-coded thing we just saw before. We output that to the latch. We do the usual copy all the flash data into the SRAM out to the end of the data we care about. We read the uh, magic port to shut off the flash, enabling the SRAM, initialize the stack pointer, and we're off to the races. Now... Because we're playing around with a bank select, it's very important that when we change the value of the low bank select bits, that we're not executing code that is coming from the low bank because we're basically going to pull the rug out from under our feet. Now, in theory, we can change it, provided that the software in each of the two banks that we're going from and to are identical or otherwise have some way uh, of coherently allowing the CPU to continue running while we're, uh, like I said, pulling the rug out from under our feet. All right, that would require a little bit more planning. Not not the end of the world. We'll leave that as a, uh, as a, as a game for the viewer to work out some simple test programs to make that work. Um, we're going to uh, skirt the issue by putting the code that we're going to use up in the high bank. So if we look at where this, uh, these instructions are uh, executing from, they'll obviously be, because of the padding, in the top 32K bank when the Z80 is running. Now, what are we going to do? We're going to pad the stack with some recognizable data, which is AA, and we're going to use a destructive uh, move to replicate that over and over again. We're going to initialize the uh, SIO chip so we can print stuff, and then we're going to print a hello message here. We'll put the address of the message in the HL register, and we're going to call put S. Now, this is a little different than some of the other test programs that keep things a little bit simpler. Rather than giving it a pointer and a length, I'm going to just call put S, and let's have a look, see at uh, the startup message and the put S pro uh, function in a minute. So here's the startup message. Carriage return, new line, new line. We print out low bank test, carriage return, new line, and then there's a zero. This is more like a C type string it is null terminated okay and see these other strings down here have nulls after them as well if we come down here to the uh put s where the heck did it go oh it's included in another file i factored it out while tinkering with this to make it cleaner 
Let's take a quick look at the put as function, what it does, according to the docs. Write bytes from the memory at address in HL to the console until we reach a null character. And this is how put as works in the standard C library. Save all the registers so we're not going to disrupt anything from the calling program. Get each byte. Uh, ask if it is zero, if you or anything with itself, and it is a zero, then the Z flag will be set. Otherwise, it will not be set. So if it reaches a zero, it, 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 it jumps to put as done, which is down here, which cleans up. It restores all the registers we saved in the stack, and it returns. If it is not a null character, it puts it in the B register, because that's where it has to be if we want to call the transmit character routine we talked about before to print it on the console then we increment hl to point to the next character that we want to print and we go back up to the top of this loop grab it check if it's null if it is we're done otherwise print it and go around 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 till we run into an l character okay so that's how put s works so that's what's happening when we print out this um startup message now after that we are going to uh, play around with the low bank uh, routines, okay? So I've written some uh, functions, uh, some subroutines here, and uh, what this is going to do, it's gonna uh, set these uh, four bits here in the low bank select latch, right? And it's not going to disrupt the other four bits in there. So let's take a quick look at the select bank subroutine. Presumably, it will use our cached value and do the right thing. So this thing calls it, and here it is. What are we going to do? We're going to save a f so that we don't disrupt its contents. Then we're going to get the cache value. We're going to end it with 0f. By ending it with 0f, we're forcing the most significant four bits to be 0, and we're going to leave the least significant four bits alone. Least significant four bits are these up here. T0 for D3. Most significant bits right now in the A register are all zeros, okay? Then what are we going to do? We're going to OR the C register into the A register. So whatever bits are in C that are ones will now be ones in A. It's pretty important when you call this that C is either going to be a zero or a one zero, two zero, three zero, and so on just like which one of the banks we want to choose, all right? So the, in other words, the least significant nibble of C really has to be zero. Otherwise, you might be uh, changing and messing up the bits in the, uh, that, that deal with uh, the SD card in the printer, okay? So when we or all that stuff together, we're going to put it back in the cache because we've just changed the value. And then we're going to output it to the latch so that it will start taking place restore the accumulator and move on our merry way back to where we came from. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to set Z, C to zero. We're going to select the zero bank. Then we're going to call this fill. Then we're going to say set, set, select bank number one. And we're going to fill that with something. Then we're going to go select bank number two, fill it up, select bank number E, and then we're going to fill it up with some stuff and so on, right? Then later on, we're going to go back and we're going to dump out the contents of bank number zero. Then we're going to dump out the contents of bank number one, bank number two, bank number three, bank number E, and bank number F. Now, let's before we look at the select, or rather the fill routine, let's look and see what's really happening, the pattern here. Look at that, nicely fits all on one screen, even though we only got about 25 lines. Okay, so if we fit, we put zero into C, which is the register that we use to select the bank, we just looked at that, and we then call this fill low bank, what this routine is gonna do is just pad the contents of memory address range zero through seven FFF from the perspective of the Z80, whatever the currently selected low bank is, it's going to fill it with the value that's in the C register. I wrote this specifically to be paired with select bank. So when I set C to zero and call select bank, I then just call fill low bank, and it'll pad in whatever the, uh, you know, the range of zero to seven FFF with whatever is in the C register, which is the parameter to fill low bank. So by setting C to 10 and selecting uh, bank number 10, or bank one, 
rather, uh, and then I fill the bank, it'll fill bank number one with uh, hex 10. All right, same thing for bank two, it'll be filled with a hex 20. Bank E will be filled with bank with uh, E's, okay? Now, notice that I, I, I didn't do them all, and we don't need to test every single one. Maybe you should, but I'll leave that as a test for the viewer. The key here is I'm filling up bank 0, 1, 2, and E. The last thing you want to do is fill up bank F, because that's where this code is executing. So keep your brain straight. Don't destroy <laughs> this thing while it's running. Uh, so what do we do then? We're going to dump out bank 0, 1, 2, 3, E, and F. Now, I did not fill bank 3 with anything. So this is actually going to have garbage in it when it's called. What's going to be there? I don't know. If you just powered up your your uh, your your retro board, it's whatever the RAM filled up with when the power came on. Otherwise, it might be that you had some other data stored in there from three hours ago. You may have never changed it since then, and that'll appear in Bank 3. So this should be considered garbage, uh, regardless of why it got there. Uh, if we dump out Bank E... Uh, zero, uh, then we did fill that in, so we should see all E's in there, right? Or E0's, I should say. And if we dump out bank F, what we should see is all the executable code that's actually running here. It's dumping itself out. When we're done with all that, we go into a halt loop. So let's look at the fill bank and the dump bank routines. There's dump, and here's fill, so this one's easier. What are we going to do? We're going to save the registers that we are going to alter when this routine runs. We're going to restore them when we're done. So what does this do? It's going to do an LDIR and just pad the memory with whatever comes in register C by setting HL to zero, uh, setting the first byte in the range by storing the contents of the C register, and then setting what? DE to one. So it's going to copy from zero to one. All right, it's going to copy this many bytes because one of them was already set up here. We need the remaining 32k bytes minus one, or hex 8000 minus one, which is 7FFF. Okay, and this thing just does a destructive copy to set all the bytes in the range from zero to uh, se uh, 7FFF to whatever the contents is in the C register. Okay, now what do we do for dump bank? Dump the bank in the C register. And we don't need to see all of it. We'll be sitting here printing forever if we look at all this 32K of each one of the banks we've asked to print. So what this is going to do is it's going to dump some some sample ranges from the bank. All right, so from that, <laughs> spoiler alert, okay? Uh, so we're going to, again, save all the registers that could be modified when this thing runs, restore them when we're done, and return. Uh, what is it going to do? The first thing it's going to do is select the bank based on the value in the C register, and that makes sense because we want to dump that one out. And of course, this code assumes it's running from the high bank. Otherwise, when this is done, again, like I said before, you don't want to pull the rug out from under your feet. Okay, so it's going to select the bank it wants to dump. Then what is it going to do? It's going to load HL with something called bank message. It's going to print it. Then it's going to put the C register into the accumulator, and it's going to call hex dump A. We talked about that before. It just dumps out a two-digit value uh, that's in the accumulator register. And then it's going to presumably print out a carriage return and a line feed. Okay, so what's this thing going to do? It's going to print out a message. And I think bank messages, uh, here is the contents of bank such and so, right? Bank messages, uh, carriage return line free, and then it'll just say, say bank. Then there will be a space, and then it'll stop printing, okay? And then after that, it'll print out the two-digit hex value. So it's like bank zero, zero, bank, you know, two, zero, and stuff like that. Uh, and then it'll print a carriage return after that. CRLF must be up here somewhere as well. CRLF is this label here, which is a return, a new line, and a null. So that makes sense. And then after that, what's it going to do? It's going to load HL with 0, BC with 30 in hex. E is set to 1, which means I want a fancy hex dump. Then it will load HL with something called dots, which must be the address of another message, which is right here. Now look what we've got here. Dots is three dots, and there's not a null after that. 
So when the put s function is called, which will come after the load HL with dots, it'll call put s or puts. Uh, what will happen is, and as the comment notes over here, it'll print three dots followed by the carriage return new line and a zero. So don't throw you know, let this throw you because this is a string. Yeah, it is, but it doesn't have a null after it. So if you print it, it keeps going to whatever follows it down here. All right. And this was incredibly common back in the day because memory was so expensive and you just didn't have a lot of it. That's why we have bank selecting in the first place. We only got 64K. Every byte counts. You don't want to waste any of it. So you would arrange your, your, uh, your, your functions and stuff like this so that you could reuse them in different contexts. So that's what happens when we put S when HL points at the dots label above. Then what are we going to do? We're going to load HL with 7FD0. And then we're going to put 30 in BC and do a fancy dump of that. So all in, what is this doing? It's printing the first, what? 3-0 in hex, like 48 bytes in a hex dump. Then we're going to say dot, dot, dot. And then it's going to print the last 48 bytes in a hex dump of the same bank. So the beginning through the end, you know, and it's all the same, so we just put dot, dot, dot in there. That way it doesn't scroll for an hour and a half, especially if you have a low baud rate. Oh my gosh, you got to sit there for an hour and a half waiting for it all to come out. So in the end, what this is going to do is it's going to select a couple of sample banks. It's going to pad them with different data. Then after all this is done, we're going to print out some samples from each one of those banks. And, and you do not want to fill a bank and print it out, fill a bank and print it out, fill a bank and print it out. You might think you want to do that, but that's absolutely worthless because you want to know that by filling each one of these banks and moving around the bank value, you didn't destroy the contents of, in this example, bank zero, when you're filling in and padding the value in bank number one and so on, out to bank E, all right? So you want to make sure that that's the case. So that's why I put the test case together like this. Now, I probably should have done all 16, but I got to leave something for the viewer. Uh, go back and go ahead and add some other ones. Write a loop, they do this whole thing in a loop, you know, whatever you want to do, enhance this program. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a try. Make world, compile all these things. Uh, what do we want here? We want the bank select test program right here. In the README routine, we have the command that we want to do. If you install the programmer for software and you already built it, we talked about that in another video. We want to then download the bank select routine. So let's go ahead and bring in a terminal window so we can see this run. Because remember, when the Flash programmer runs, the last thing it does is it reboots the machine. So this thing should uh, immediately uh, start running right after the Download is done. You saw it go really fast when it was doing the FFs while it was programming. Now it's going through the verification uh, logic in the Flash programmer, and it's going to go ahead and verify it all, even though it didn't program at all. This would have taken a lot longer if we didn't pad the low bank out to FFFF, uh, you know, when we, when we did it, as I said earlier. So you saw all this stuff spew out, and then it goes into the uh, halt uh, endless loop at the end of the program. So let's go back to the top and see what happens. Remember, we printed out low bank test, then we padded out a bunch of sample banks, then we went and printed them out. So bank zero here, the first 48 bytes are zero, through the last 48 bytes, they're all zero. That's what they're supposed to be, so far so good. Uh, bank number one. It's filled with all 10s. That's what it's supposed to be. Bank number two is all 20s. This is all great. Bank three, we never sent any data in there, so it's all full of garbage. Wherever that thing came from, whatever it was before, that's expected. Bank E is all set to E's. Now, remember what I said about bank F. We went ahead and set the uh, low bank to F. So both the low bank and the high bank at the time we dump this out, are the same values. So look what happens here. The low bank says 3AB7, blah, 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 blah. This is the code that does the copying of the uh, all the data from the flash to the SRAM and so on. And up to the end of memory here, 
This is the contents of the stack that got filled in when the program was running. Remember, we padded the stack out, a bunch of data at the end of the uh, of the RAM with all AAs uh, early on in the program. So even though this is the low bank address range, because we set it to bank F, we're looking at the high uh, end of memory. We have two copies of it. So this thing works as expected. And if we did anything, in order to test it any further, we'd have to clip on logic analyzers and stuff like that. And that's all fine and dandy. I'll leave that uh, to someone else to do. If you want to put together a video showing how all this thing runs on a logic analyzer, please do. Knock yourself out. My HP 1660A just dumped on itself. The uh, video card went out in it. Doesn't that just figure, you know? At 136 channel logic analyzer, and the analyzer actually works. If I can squint my eyes, I can sort of see what's going on on the screen, but it just doesn't want to do. It's, it, no, it's just not suitable for this video. Uh, and I more than invite anyone else to do a contribution, a bunch of screenshots, whatever you want to do. Let me know. I'll be glad to edit the playlist. And with that, I bid you adieu. Thanks for watching. See you next time.